Got an email from somebody saying, I noticed on one show you did this week, you referred to D.C. where you are as the city of the goddess. I'm curious about why you did that. Uh, this was uh, somebody who has uh, not listened uh, to the show apparently for years and years because it's been probably a year since I went off on one of these rants. I know that you know our show has been growing quite a bit and we've got a lot of new listeners, so I'll just tell you the story real quickly. One of the things that I love about living in the district of the goddess is that it's the district of the goddess. And it, this is something that prior to the Civil War, pretty much every American knew. And largely since the Civil War, uh, or since that era, uh, pretty much nobody knows. Uh, there's a couple of great history books over at the Spy Museum here in Washington, D.C. about this, and you can find them in other places, but the Spy Museum has a great library of kind of obscure and arcane and, and reprints of old books and things. But here's the story. And it, you know, parts of it may be apocryphal. I, I don't have absolute nailed down proof of all of this, but there's a, an, a, an enormous body of evidence and uh, suggestions that it's all fairly accurate. Back when this country was formed, the idea of the founders, particularly Franklin, Jefferson, and uh, Madison, and, uh, you know, to some extent, John Jay and James and John Adams, but particularly Franklin, Jefferson, and Madison, they were kind of a triumvirate. Um, they, f they were patterning America on three democratic institutions. On the ancient Greeks, the first democracy, 3,000 years ago. On the ancient Romans, the first republic, 2,000 years ago. And on the Iroquois Confederacy, which had a constitution, a three-branch form of government with a Supreme Court, a legislature, and an executive, and, and only one gender was allowed to vote in five out of the six Iroquois nations. Now, for the Iroquois, it was women who were allowed to vote, not men. Uh, the founders of this country thought, well, you know, we can do the same thing, only we'll make it men instead of women. But the thing that they noticed was that all three of these historic democratic republics that they were pattering America after had goddesses in addition to gods. And we had no goddesses. We, we had, you know, God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit, and they're all male. Or at least God and Jesus uh, are typically portrayed as having penises. And uh, it was like, okay, we got plenty of gods. Where is the goddess? And they didn't want to take, you know, like, you know, uh, Zeus's helpmate uh, or, or uh, you know, some Roman god. So they, so they created one. They literally invented a goddess out of, out of whole cloth. They took Christopher Columbus's name and they feminized it. And they named her Columbia. They put her on our coins during the George Washington administration, and she stayed on our coins until Ronald Reagan's administration. Reagan killed the goddess. He took her off our coins. But from George Washington until the 1980s, there was that woman on our quarters and on our half dollars and on our silver dollars. She was called Standing Liberty, Walking Liberty, uh, the Goddess of Liberty, uh, uh, Mrs. Independ Ms. Independence, uh, there are other names for her, but she's basically the goddess. They put her on top of the Capitol building, and they passed a law that no building in the Capitol could be taller than the head of the goddess, which is why there's no high-rises in this town. Now, Republican Darrell Issa is uh, in charge of the committee that oversees D.C., and he's doing his best to try and do away with that because there's a bunch of developers that want to take us to 20, 30, 40, 50 stories instead of just 6 or 8 or 10 and because they can make a pile of money. But so far, there's been a fair amount of pushback. So, so far, the goddess rules. In, I think it was 1847, it was before the Civil War, it wasn't completed until after the Civil War, but when they started building the Washington Monument, which is the only building in this town that's taller than the head of the goddess, they started giant, building this giant phallic symbol. It took an act of Congress to legalize building something taller than the goddess. And, of course, it was, you know, this... this uh, uh, giant penis symbol uh, honoring George Washington. And that was kind of when the story of the goddess started fading out of our collective memory. They also decided that if you live in the district of the goddess, the district of Columbia, Columbia is the name of the goddess, that you would be, you must be so committed to the work of the goddess, which is governance, to form a more perfect union, to provide for the general welfare. You would have to be so committed to the general welfare of the entire nation and the more perfect union of the entire country that you yourself could have no dog in the fight. And so if you lived in the District of Columbia and did the sacred work of the goddess, 
you had no representation. You had no senator. You had no congressperson. Uh, you could you could uh, vote in the federal election for president, but only for an elector. You're not voting for the president. And there would be no representation, so you would have no corrupting influence. This is how high-minded and egalitarian these guys were. And this is still on the, on the books, by the way. Uh, the license plates here in Washington, D.C. say no taxation, say taxation without representation. Right? Because we do pay taxes, and we have no representation. At least no voting representation. So that's the story of the goddess, and, 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 oh, and frankly, it's only part of the story. I mean, it goes on from there. Uh, she's in front of every single one of the federal buildings. Uh, old John, what's his name, the, uh, the head of the Justice Department uh, in, the, in the Bush administration, put a blue cloth over her naked breast. Remember that? Uh, she's in front of, you know, she's holding, blindfolded, holding the scales of justice. She's in front of the Pentagon with a shield and, and arrows. You're listening to the Tom Hartman Program. Call 202-536-2370. She's in front of the Agriculture Department with a sickle and a handful of wheat. She's, I mean, she's everywhere in this town, right? If you once you start looking for her, you see the goddess everywhere. To watch more clips from our programs, hit the Watch More Videos button over here. And please be sure to hit the handy-dandy subscribe button so you'll always be up to date. Tag, you're it.